Um, next up, we have Professor Tuula Teeri coming on stage. Tuula is the president of Aalto University, a molecular geneticist, and has been one of the strongest supporters of the buzzing startup scene around uh, Aalto University since day one. She's been pivotal in giving students the freedom to pursue their dreams, and today she is here to share her thoughts on how the university is evolving with the energy and momentum around the startup movement here in Finland. Please give a warm welcome to Professor Tuula Teeri. Kiitos. Hello, everybody. It's a bit of a challenge to come here and talk about the university on a forum, forum where everybody is talking about entrepreneurship and startups. Uh, I hope that within the next uh, few minutes I will be able to convince you that actually this university, Alto University, also is a kind of a startup. And we do have a huge challenge uh, ahead of us because, in one way, my, my title was given that, you know, disrupting a hundred year old in institution, but I would say that we are actually attempting maybe to challenge a thousand year old tradition. And I will tell you a little bit about uh, what we are doing. Uh, when we talk about disruption, and this is something that uh, when people talk about entrepreneurship, they uh, oftentimes also mention disruption. And if you think of what is happening in Finland today, uh, how we are going to keep going this welfare state that we have built over decades, we can see that we do have a lot of challenges. I mean, those industries that we have built our well-being on uh, are transforming uh, for one or other reason quite rapidly. Uh, uh, and many other things also in the society are changing. I think that I used to say that, you know, I'm a molecular biologist and I'm having some, some trouble understanding nuclear physics. But when I was listening to the previous speaker, I think that I have found another arena where I have problems to hang with. And that's like the social media and all these tools that, that our students are very used to using. But we teachers and rectors are not at all uh, learned uh, in that respect. And if you look Look at the previous uh, bottom part of this picture. I mean, we are really in the universities also going on a transformation on learning methods and ways of learning, you know, uh, which are challenging uh, all of our faculty and staff. And so, uh, what, why Aalto University was founded, and we are a merger university, so we are actually combining technology with business and design. And the reason for that is that when you look at the uh, uh, problems of some of the companies, we can see that we may have had a problem of too little design in some of the concepts, and we definitely have had a huge challenge about how to sell the products that actually are technically performing really, really well. All our, almost many, a lot of our expert industries is based on technology, but we have to spice it up with lots more design, and we have to become much better in selling and uh, developing the business con uh, concepts. And so the question was then, what would be the role of the universities in this kind of development? And uh, the uh, opinion of the industrial leaders and also the university uh, presidents and rectors was that uh, we also, at the same time as we are uh, changing our innovation system, we have to take universities into this work and we have to change the way the universities are operating as part of the, the, the innovation ecosystem. And the, the way that was done was actually, I'm really proud of this because this is usually not what happens with universities in these kind of uh, uh, stages of development. But what the Finnish government decided was that in order to improve the performance and, and uh, participation of universities uh, in this innovation system, uh, we need to give universities more autonomy. And, and usually what happens is that uh, universities are given more instructions how to carry out their job. And I was really pleased to see that finally, in this stage of development in Finland, somebody thinks that the universities actually know their own business. And so now we have to prove that this was the right decision. And so, uh, what we have here, so we have the, the uh, merger of these three previous universities, so this is the sort of hundred year old bit of this talk, to say that we are merging three universities, each of which has over a hundred year history. Uh, also, with this uh, challenge, you know, so we are getting some extra resources, so we have uh, uh, extra funding from the government for at least five years, uh, about 80 million 
uh, uh, euros per year, and we also have been able to, with very favorable conditions, to collect an endowment capital, which also then allows us to uh, enforce this independence that we now have, or the autonomy that we got from, from, from our government. And so if we look at the changes that we have uh, in the education side, and one has to always remember with universities that yes, we do research, but according to some uh, uh, people, you know, we also do research so that we could provide high quality education to our students. And if you look at, you know, the job market where we are training our students at the moment, uh, this is an uh, observation from Sony uh, in their annual meeting a couple of years ago. They say the top 10 in-demand jobs in 2010 did not exist in 2004. And you know that our students at the minimum are uh, studying with us uh, about four years, so you can imagine that in order to tailor make the, the uh, uh, education towards specific industries is no, no longer going to be possible because those industries that we are tailor making for have already transformed by the time that our students come out of the university. The other interesting thing is if you look at the technology, the amount of new technical information, it's about doubling at the moment uh, in every two years. And it means that those students what we teach them in the first year, half of it is going to be uh, outdated on their third year. So, so these are the kind of challenges that we have in our system. So we are currently preparing students for jobs that don't exist and embracing knowledge and skills that we don't yet have. So if you think starting up companies is difficult, transforming universities is a bit of a challenge as well. How we answer to this is that we actually have a lot of bottom-up initiatives where we listen to our students and our visionary teachers on what kind of uh, learning and teaching methods we should have so that we can fulfill or meet the challenges of future. One of the best ones we have is the Alto Factory concept where maybe the design factory which we have in Otaniemi has, has best uh, uh, shown us the way or led the way for how we can teach you know, uni uh, students uh, uh, in good con connection with industrial uh, researchers, uh, academic staff, and, and, and then also very much uh, learning by doing, uh, having uh, to use their theoretical uh, background to solve some real world problems. This is a place which is buzzing with information and uh, buzzing with activity and a lot of joy and passion, you know, in the kind of work that the students are there doing. It is drawing to itself uh, many of our, even those companies that we have previously done more traditional type of, type of uh, collaboration, they find that this is a very good environment for them also to interact with the students and researchers. Uh, we are tying these kind of activities with different kinds of educational programs. So we have, for instance, this uh, International Design Business Management Master Program, uh, uh, which has been uh, also done uh, pretty much, which is also at the different level of education, teaching the students, you know, how the design uh, business can be managed in a, in a creative way. And the, the reason that we have a platform and a place for this kind of activities means that it draws or pulls toward itself, you know, also other kinds of activities. So our students started an entrepreneurship society quite early on in the development of Alto, and, and then that led to the development of the Alto Venture Garage, and this conference, together with, of course, another, a lot of other initiatives, has led uh, uh, to an, a, a real expansion of the entrepreneurial activities in and around uh, Alta University, involving so uh, much students, but also our faculty. And it has also been the leading edge for our internationalization, so uh, uh, collaborations with the Stanford uh, Entrepreneurship Program uh, 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 and Design Factory Initiative together with Tonji University, Swinburne University, and just last week I was opening one in, in Chile. So, so these kind of things, are, and, 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 and these are examples also that, you know, how much our students are challenging the existing ways of teaching and learning. Uh, they want to do their learning in a train, uh, they want to do their learning on a boat, and if you look at this thousand-year-old, five-hundred-year-old tradition, we used to put them seating, and then we sort of thought that we can tell the students 
what they should learn. And, and, and you can see that these kind of initiatives, they offer a completely different kinds of learning experience for the students, where they pretty much plan their curriculum themselves, they invite the teachers and they decide on the methods. So, so these uh, we welcome very much and, and, and so that it's not just the learning uh, event, which is a dialogue with the students, but it's the entire process that we want to do together with our students. And so, uh, uh, on another kind of uh, way, you know, this kind of concept of sharing spaces between different actors, you know, is also realized in our Open Innovation House, which we uh, uh, open uh, at the turn of the year, where we have different kinds of uh, uh, people uh, working in different kinds of organizations, like the research, Nokia Research Center, uh, the EIT ICT Labs, uh, Helsinki Institute of Information Technology, and, and different kinds of projects like the App Campus that I don't have really time to talk about today. They can share the space and meet each other, and, and where kind of serendipity has a chance, you know, you meet somebody by chance and you come and start getting new kind of ideas. So this is very much uh, focused on information technology. And then, uh, finally, we have uh, uh, renewed our system for entrepreneurship support. So, we, instead of only maybe concentrating on the box of innovation services and technology transfer, which is a large part of all European university innovation services, we now are also building an ent entrepreneurship education to be able to introduce our students to the concepts of uh, uh, entrepreneurship much earlier than we've done before. We will also do research on entrepreneurship because it's very interesting to see what is happening, for instance, now with the Venture Garas and the Startup Sauna, how you actually build an effective entrepreneurship accelerator. This is something that the entire Europe has been thinking for about three decades at least. And then we have a very uh, good collaboration with the Startup Sauna and Venture Garas, where the growth venturing and startup services are being uh, catalyzed by our students, by our research, and also very much by uh, professional coaches that come from outside Finland uh, to help you know, these uh, uh, new entrep uh, entrep entrepreneurship uh, startups uh, uh, getting going. So this is what I wanted to share with you. I hope that uh, you understand um, our passion about entrepreneurship. And I also want to express my great gratitude to our students, you know, who have uh, in this front helped uh, to make Aalto uh, an exemplary university, even in the world scale. Thank you.